Hey there, for this travel tip video, we're going to teach you what turbulence is and help you relax when you're on your next flight if it does get bumpy inside the airplane. You will learn some turbulence travel tips from my husband who is a pilot and I really think his knowledge is going to help you not be as scared the next time you fly with turbulence. All right, I want you to introduce yourself and tell them like how many years you've been flying with turbulence. <laughs> Uh, I think you fly with turbulence all the time at higher altitudes, but uh, I've been flying for uh, about 26 years. Uh, I've logged over 10,000 hours okay. in the air. All right. And have you ever had like a terrible flight that was super turbulent, that it, was scary? In 10,000 hours, I probably had maybe one or two instance, instances where it was uh, a little scary to me, okay. which is okay. not bad for 10,000 hours of flying. Okay, a little scary to you means mm -hmm. what to the passengers? So we try to classify turbulence just so we can explain it to each other or other airplanes in four different categories. Uh, light, moderate, severe, or extreme. The FAA classifies each one of those, like what does extreme mean so we're all on the same page. Okay. And in 10,000 hours I've had two incidences where it was probably borderline between moderate and severe. Never okay. extreme. Okay. The airplanes, if I understand it correctly, are built to withstand... Turbulence, yes. They're the over-engineered. Okay. And they're, they're built that way with their wings, that mm -hmm. their wings can move like a skyscraper can that can move? yes. They can flex. What does that mean? That means they can bend up and down uh, and they're not very straight or brittle where they would just break off. Okay. The first thing that I do as a passenger in what I think is extreme turbulence, that's like major bumping where we're going like that and you feel like your tummy, your tummy give way, like whoo, that kind of thing. The first thing I want to do is look outside the window. Mm -hmm. If it's super cloudy to y'all, like what are you checking up front in the cockpit well, for for turbulence. Before you get there, I think you should explain what turbulence is. Okay, great. So if the world, if the earth were perfectly flat, you wouldn't have turbulence. Turbulence is basically a difference between two air currents that are usually caused by friction. In other words, when you are flying over, for instance, mountains, the air over the mountain is being slowed down by the height of the mountain and air around the mountain is going faster. So where those two air currents meet, you're gonna get what is similar to stirring your coffee, a little bit of whirlpool, or an eddy is what they call it. And that's what creates the uneven ride or what creates turbulence. Or like bumps. Correct, and so we associate turbulence with uh, topography, flying over mountain ranges like the Rockies. Uh, we uh, also with weather, if a thunderstorm is building up high, it's pushing air out of its way, which increases the speed of the air, and the neighboring air flow may not be as fast, so we always try to expect turbulence near weather systems, thunderstorms, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that I've heard on several flights, and, and I think it's really just some unknowing or beginner flight attendants who say like, folks, we're fixing to fly through thunderstorms. Please buckle your seatbelts. Do you fly through thunderstorms? No, we never fly through thunderstorms. We fly around thunderstorms. Around them, okay. However, you can experience turbulence around a thunderstorm, not necessarily yes. in one. Okay. Um, so. Uh, the, the biggest goal for us is the first goal for us with turbulence is to recognize it. Okay. Uh, communicate it to others so that other airplanes know it's there and then to try to avoid it or minimize it. Okay. Is it worse over the ocean? It can be. There is a type of turbulence known as clear air turbulence, which is just a mystery of nature. There's no way to detect it's coming. And it has nothing to do with weather. It has nothing to do with the geography. Okay. It just happens. So you communicate it with others. And mm -hmm. then what do the announcements to the flight attendants that y'all make mean? So we have different varying degrees. If I know turbulence is coming, I will seat the passengers as well as the flight attendants. But there are occasions where it was completely unforecast and we had no idea it was there. And um, I will, in my company's policy is we'll repeat, be seated immediately three times. And that to the flight attendants is, I don't care where you sit, just sit down now. Okay. And sometimes that means on the floor. Oh, 
Okay. But it doesn't mean that you're fixing to crash or no. lose control of the airplane and die. Correct. <laughs> It just means there's a chance that because they're not seated with their seatbelts fastened, which you should always do while you're seated, <laughs> uh, they don't have a seatbelt on. And so what we don't want them to do is get airborne or hit the top of the ceiling. So I want them to be grounded on something when it's something we're not expecting. Does it ever make you nervous when you are just flying through clouds? You can't see the ground. You can't see where you're going for like two hours at a time. Not really. Uh, we are highly trained to fly with just reference to the aircraft's instruments inside. Okay. So it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not fun. It's nice to look out the window, but it doesn't bother me. Okay. On one of our flights that was super turbulent to me, um, coming from Rapid City, South Dakota, we heard the pilot say, flight attendants, check in, please. After it was like turbulence that came out of nowhere, it seemed like. What does that mean? It's going to vary for different airlines, but most airlines, after we've seated everybody, uh, including the flight attendants, and especially with unsuspecting turbulence, uh, we check in with the lead flight attendant and she checks in with all the other flight attendants to see if there was anybody injured, if we're all okay. And that indicates to the flight attendants that we have exited the part of the flight where we think the turbulence was and we should start smoothing out. So it's usually going to be followed by the... Uh, permission from the captain to go ahead and let the flight attendants resume their duties. Okay. So. And you're, you're also showing the flight attendants that you do care about them. Of course. They are uh, people, so that's nice. He's a super nice pilot, I think. <laughs> it would be nice to fly with him. He talks on the microphone, he tells you what's outside the window, but not while you're napping in the middle of the flight, probably. <laughs> um, but, and he's very respectful of all authorities. When I was coming from Rapid City with my mom and it got super turbulent from out of nowhere, um, it was right after they served like morning drinks, but this was at 12 o'clock. So some people had coffee and I felt so bad for them, but that's one travel tip for turbulence is to not wear white inside the airplane or a beautiful creamy white sweater that you're wanting to wear throughout your vacation. And I have a video about what not to wear in the airplane because I have done most of these things and worn most of these things and learned from those mistakes. So check out that video. It's one of my most watched videos over the last seven years. Another travel tip for going through turbulence is to pack a real book because you can grip the stew out of that thing <laughs> while you're being scared instead of the legs or the arms of the passengers beside you. And then I also um, will just eat, like I have Cheez-Its or some kind of snack that I can eat. Are there any other tips that y'all do as soon as you know it's gonna be a little rocky or bumpy, <laughs> not rocky, but bumpy or tips that you know of that passengers can do? We make sure that our seat belts are tight across our lap so that there's we don't get pushed off a seat, um, oh which we don't. <laughs> we always wear our seatbelts in the flight deck at that all times. So... And then of course, we also have drinks up there, but every drink we carry in our flight deck, we put lids on to make sure we don't spill anything on any part of the airplane. And I should point out too, turbulence detection has gotten way better since the advent of things like iPads and uh, airplane-based Wi-Fi or internet access. So okay. we have several tools that use the internet um, to communicate our turbulence level to other airplanes around us. And then likewise, we can see other airplanes. So for example, uh, the devices in your iPhone, there's accelerometers in here and your iPads. If they determine that if there's been a sudden change of direction, which would indicate turbulence, they send that message down to a server on the ground, which then communicates that to all the other airplanes around us. So that then you can also be informed and you will get a notification pop up that there's turbulence ahead of you that was reported by another aircraft ahead of you. So the, the game for us is like we said, is to avoid it or get everybody down before we get into it. And so we've got lots of tools these days to help us prepare for it when we, before we just didn't know it was there. Okay, and another thing that I've noticed that many of you have mentioned over the years, so it hardly happens, but it seems like with the small airplanes, they fly faster through it. <laughs> and if I'm driving a car and I'm on a bumpy road, I'm going to slow down. Mm -hmm. um, 
Does it make a difference if you fly faster or slower or is it? In terms of safety, no, but it's more for comfort. So uh, bumps comfort. don't feel as bad when you're flying slower through them than yes. if you're speeding through them. Okay. Um, so okay. Uh, we do it mostly just because it's more comfortable, right? And also to know that when we do get into turbulence, uh, rarely do we just sit in it and just hope it ends soon. We're on the radio asking the air traffic controller what the rides are like at a higher or a lower altitude. And sometimes we've gone down several thousand feet to get out of the turbulence that we're in mm -hmm. uh, because it's just not comfortable for anybody. And so we will change our altitude lots of times uh, based on the ride. I think it was years ago you told me, don't you kick the air, air conditioner down a few notches? I go full cold when we get into bumps because okay. I, I know that usually bumpy motion sickness and heat are three things that cause people to get mm -hmm. sick on an airplane. So we try to make it cooler out there. Another travel tip to help during turbulence is to have your AirPods or really good headphones and that you've downloaded the airlines app onto your phone because that's how most airlines are giving you free entertainment to watch. So movies and TV shows that are funny might help you keep your mind off of what's happening. But I do know it is just terrible. <laughs> it's a terrible feeling because you're out of control and you can't see when it's going to end, I guess, too. Um, any final words? Just can... know we take it very seriously and we don't like the ride either if it's bad, so we're gonna do our best to try to keep it as smooth as possible. But once again, can't always detect it's coming. So I encourage everyone, when you are sitting at your seat, wear your seatbelt. Well, thank you for your time and list any other questions for more in this pilot series for us. And we'll try to answer them in another video.